Welcome to the chosen day three, represent. Represent, Luke 9, 23 to 24. Let's take a look at that in my Bible. Um, the chapter title is Peter's Confession of Christ. And starting with verse 18, once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowds say that I am? And they gave different answers. And then going down, Peter answered, the Christ of God. 21, Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone. And he said, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law. He must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Now here's our verse for today, verse 23. Then he said to them all, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit his very soul? All right, let's look at the reading. Represent. To save our lives, we must lose them. That's a mind bender for sure, but clearly vital to understand. Jesus said it to the disciples after they'd already dropped everything to follow him from town to town. They sacrificed their careers, homes, and relationships for the man they believed was the Messiah. Life as they knew it had turned upside down, but more would be required of them, and Jesus was doubling down. He knew what lay ahead. He knew he was leaving, and he knew they would become pillars of the early church in charge of spreading the truth about salvation to the world, discipling the masses, and claiming Christ in the face of imprisonment, torture, and death. They would lose their lives on earth figuratively and literally for the sake of all they would gain in heaven. And they did it well because their testimonies, their personal stories of what Jesus had said and done were potent demonstrations of his transformative love and power in their lives. They shared the gospel with an unstoppable, contagious, relentless passion that, to be honest, seems kind of rare these days. How come? Well, for starters, they weren't in love with themselves or their own stories. That's very important. They weren't branding their Christian narratives for maximum personal benefit, approval, or sympathy, for clicks or likes. They weren't assigning themselves the hero role or belaboring their before Christ dysfunction with all of its juicy, sensationalistic tidbits. When you look at biblical examples, it's amazing how few words were given to their broken past. The almost exclusive focus is on Jesus. Take Mary Magdalene. The fact that she was delivered from seven demons is a crucial aspect of her testimony because it showcases Jesus' authority and why she responded to him the way she did. And that's it. That's all the detail we need to know. In other words, her autobiography wouldn't have been titled The Dark Years with 300 pages dedicated to describing the monsters within. Fascinating? Sure. But powerful and effective and glorifying to the one who had rescued her? Mm, not so much. There's a reason we meet Mary subsequent to her healing, because that's where the real story is. There are a few other things we know about her. One, she followed Jesus and financially supported his ministry until crucifixion, which means she gave everything she had to follow him. Number two, she endured the crucifixion and stayed close to Jesus while he suffered and died. Number three, as mentioned and delivered the other day, she was the first person he appeared to after he rose from the dead, and she was the one he sent to tell the disciples the universe-altering news, all because the old was gone and dead. Jesus had given her new life. Which means that even if you've been a believer for all of 10 minutes, those minutes are entirely more relevant than the 20, 40, or 80 years of darkness prior to your conversion. Reason being, we're called to represent Jesus and to die to the lives he saved us from. When we do that, when he stays the hero of the story, our words and lives become real-time, potent demonstrations of his transformative love and power. Mm. I just love that, don't you? I love the fact that their befores are important to know, but they don't define who they are. And it didn't really matter what their before was because now they're living in their after 
because they've been saved by Jesus and they are representing him. And I just love too how on fire they were. And it's just kind of sad, I think, that we're not as quite as on fire. So I'm a little more motivated today to go out and represent and be a little bit more on fire, aren't you? I'll read the prayer focus. God, we just want to thank you today for how you have transformed each one of us. Each of our lives and stories are different, but you have saved us and we are so grateful for that. We just want to repent, Lord, of all the times that we've represented you poorly or just not represented you at all. And um, I just ask, Lord, for myself and for all of us, just show us every day how we can be part of your story. I know you've given me certain talents, everybody else certain talents. We're all in different parts of the world, and you have a job for us to do. And I pray, Lord, today you would help us remember to represent you well and to just go out there in your power and tell others about you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, moving forward, a couple questions. Um, do you find it difficult to share your testimony, and why or why not? It used to be harder when I was a younger Christian, but the older I've gotten, the easier it is. Um, and I think you just need to go out there and do it. Just share your testimony. Just share with people. Sometimes it goes well. Sometimes I fall flat on my face. But you know what? I'm out there trying. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And here's the other thing. The times that I thought when I shared and I thought, oh, that went really bad. Like that person's never going to believe in Jesus after what I just shared because I felt like it was a flop. It's funny how the Spirit will turn those times around and the people will come back and say, you were really clear. I, I really understood what you were saying about Jesus. So, you know, don't prejudge people and don't worry about yourself. I say just get out there and share your heart and it'll shine through and uh, you'll just be doing God's will. Be real. Who or what do your words most represent? That's a good question for all of us, right? Are my words representing me and what I want to do? Or are they representing God? So that's just a real good phrase to keep in my mind now. Um, who are you representing? You know, and just really kind of think about that. We always want to be representing God and putting His will first. Moving forward, what can you say that focuses more on the after Christ portion of your testimony than the before Christ portion? I think this is really a good question for all of us. We all can just be focusing more on what Jesus has transformed us into and in our new life in Christ. Um, and I just want to encourage you to just go out there and share your heart. People just need to hear about the love and grace of Jesus. And even if we don't do it well, at least we're out there trying and sharing and loving on people and they'll get the message. Jesus has a way of getting through. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and get out there and represent Jesus well today. And we'll see you tomorrow. You can get your own chosen devotional mailed right to your house, season one or season two. They also have great Bible studies from season one and season two. Simply go to thechosengifts.com to find all kinds of great chosen merchandise.